fits in a small box. And they don't let him out. They don't believe he can do very much because he has to fit in their box. Their God can't do any miracles. Their God can't protect his Bible. Their God doesn't intervene on behalf of his people. These folks have a little God who lives in a little box. They doubt God because they don't think he could do anything to begin with. And that was Thomas's problem. His God was too small to raise Jesus from the dead. So Thomas refused to believe. He doubted because he served a little God. By contrast, there are people who have a big God. He speaks and it's done. He commands and it happens. He knows how to show himself strong on behalf of them that fear him. People with a big God aren't crippled with doubts because their God is too big for that. So some people doubt God because they're already decided to refuse to believe, either because of their sin or because they trust something more than they trust God and His Word, or because they believe in a small God who lives in a small box. And those choices can be dangerous. They can rob folks of blessings they would have otherwise had. As someone said, pray, believe, and receive, or pray, doubt, and do without. But what about the rest of us? What about those of us who would never think of review, refusing to believe in God, but who still struggle with some doubts? Well, think about the story of Peter walking on the water. Jesus rebuked him for his doubt. And why did Peter doubt? Not because he refused to believe, but because he took his eyes off of Jesus. It was when he quit looking at Jesus, he began to look at the wind and the waves. And it was then that he began to doubt and to fear, and when his faith died within him, he began to sink beneath the waves. Now what that tells me is there is a way to protect myself against doubt and fear. So I need, and you need, to focus on Jesus. If I want to have a strong faith that isn't crippling by doubt or fear, I need to focus on Jesus. And that's what changed things for Thomas. His doubt turned to faith. And he looked at Jesus and thus he declared, My Lord and my God. I recently saw this on Facebook uh, where someone said, Here's my list of reasons why I'm not panicking with what's going to on in the world right now. The first one, well, his reason was Jesus. I want to close with one of the most comforting stories I've ever read about Jesus. A father came to Jesus asking him to heal his son, and he says to Jesus, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. That's in Mark 9, 22 following. And Jesus healed the man's son. But why? Why would Jesus heal this boy? The father had doubts. He admitted and said, help my unbelief. In fact, in the other parts of the gospel were told that in one town Jesus couldn't do any miracles because their unbelief was in the total town. They had unbelief. This father had unbelief. What was the difference about this man? that Jesus would heal his son. Well, the town that had unbelief refused to believe in Jesus, but the father came to Jesus because he knew that his only hope was in Jesus. Of course, he had doubts, but he remained focused on Jesus. It's only by looking to Jesus that we can overcome our doubts and receive the blessings God wants to give us. In fact, it's that determination to focus on Jesus that is the first step towards salvation. And here, as an old gospel hymn puts it, the words, If you are tired of a load of your sin, just let Jesus come into your heart. If you desire a new life to begin, let Jesus come into your heart. In the chorus, know just now, your doubtings give over. 
just now reject him no more. Just throw open the door. Let Jesus come into your heart. As we have given our offerings at the table, let's take a moment to praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer then. God of power and might, we come to this place of sanctuary from the world in hopes that you give us discernment and peace. Our world is filled with strife and greed. We pray for victims of war, our government, the forgotten, the lost. Help us to be a people who make a difference, not only through our prayers, our votes, our hopes, but also by our witness to the world. Teach us to treat others as we would be treated. Keep us from the personalizing those who don't know or treating them as statistics we don't know. Uh, help us to remember that each person has feelings and hope and no one is so foreign that he or she deserves to be forgotten. Grant us the wisdom and the power to take from this sanctuary, the will to make a difference where we are and wherever we might be in this world, as you have made a difference in us. We also pray for the needs of our world, as we said, especially the situation in Ukraine. Comfort them, protect them, and give them a way to end the fighting and to bring peace to their land. Be with those who are oppression upon them, Russian. Give them a heart of uh, that's not so stone-like. Have their, all their leaders and people move to forgive and to not worry about certain parts of land becoming theirs. We ask you to be with the different people around the world. There's been a lot of different tragedies and killings and things that are in the news. That, shock us so that we don't even want to watch anymore. Comfort those involved, be with those that, and protect those and guide people to get, live together to protect people in the right ways and so on. So we lift up like today, the, again, the family of Carol Peel, whose memorial service was Wednesday, that they are filled with comfort and remembering memories and sharing them with each other. We pray for Ellen in the hospital as she gets better, and uh, uh, Peggy as well, that they can deal with and help with her pneumonia and things. For continued pr improvement for Dana, Tom, Bob, and Joan. Keith, 
an arm, helping them to move ahead and be well. Those in assisted living, Renee, Carol, Jack, Jean, e, George, Joan, and Etta, and Carolyn. Have them feel your comfort, feel your presence, and the care that they get. We thank you for being with us this day. A lot of people that were here for the fourth, we pray for the families and friends that are traveling back. Give them safe driving in the time home and weeks. We pray for the storms, that they're not so bad that they cause a lot of damage in life or hurting anyone. We may need the rain, but we don't need the destruction, Lord. Be with other things that are on our hearts and minds, the needs that we have, the concerns on our, that we're thinking about, because you know them even before we ask. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you. Help us to not doubt, but move ahead in our faith, that we journey in faith as a light and around the world, to share it and to show others your great love. We thank you for all you do for us, O Lord, in our lives and pray those things to you. And now hear us as we pray together as Jesus' disciples were taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 43, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
who shakes heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, who lives to disturb and heal us, bless you with the power to go forth and proclaim the gospel, and the grace of God be with you all, now and always.